All right, the new unit here is going to be on systems of equations. That is two equations uh, that we, we kind of solve at the same time to look at where they where the connection is or they're solved together. And so that is that is what we're doing today algebraically. And so first thing we're going to do is solve it using substitution. And so to solve by substitution, you have to get one of the two equations solved for a variable. And so it doesn't matter whether you solve for x or solve for y. That is what you want to do first. And then you're going to plug that equation into the other. You're going to substitute it in for the variable you solved for. And then after you solve it, you plug your answer back into the first equation and get the second answer. And we'll kind of walk through that here in the first example. And so I have to have one of my equations solve for a variable. And so this is nice because they already have it. That first equation is already y equals. And so I am going to take that equation and plug it in for y. And so I have 3x plus 2, but instead of y, I know y equals 2x. still equals 28. Do the math. 2 times 2x is 4x. Those add up to 7x. Divide 7 on both sides, and I get x equals 4. Now I want two answers. I want an x answer and a y answer. You got to remember that the, the solution is where they cross. The solution is the point where the two lines would intersect. And so I have to have coordinates for the X and coordinates for the Y. And so next thing I'm going to do here is go back to the Y equals 2X. But now I'm going to, now I'm going to plug in the 4. And so Y equals 8. And so my whole answer here is the coordinate for 8. Again, solve for one of the variables. In this case, it was already done for us. Substitute it in. Solve. Then plug your answer in to get both answers. And so let's look at this one. I can solve either equation. So I can solve the top one or the bottom one for either letter. It does not matter. So I see 1x right here. So to me, that's going to be the easiest thing to solve for. And so I'm going to minus 2y over. And so I'm going to minus the 2y over. And again, I'm used to writing things kind of in mx plus b form. So I'm used to writing the variable first. But negative 12 minus 2y would be just as good. But I need to get x by itself. And so now I go back to the first equation, 8x. But x is now negative 2y minus 12. Minus 3y equals negative 1. Up here at top, I have to distribute. And so I get negative 16y. 8 times negative 2 is negative 16y. Uh, minus 96. 8 times 12 is 96. Still have minus 3y. Still have equals negative 1. Negative 16y minus 3y is negative 19y minus 96 equals negative 1. I add the 96 over. I get negative 19y equals 95. I divide by, um, <clears throat> I divide by the negative 19, and I get negative 5. Now I'm not done. I have to go back over here to x equals negative 2, and I plug the negative 5 in. So that becomes 10 minus 12. And so x equals negative 2. And so my final answer is negative 2, negative 5. There's two kinds of special cases. 
risks. So let's talk about those special cases. All right. First, this one's already solved for y. So I'm not going to worry too much about the fractions. I think they're probably given to me to help. And so negative x plus 3, but I'm going to plug all of this in for y. And so 1 third x plus 4 thirds equals 4. So negative x plus over here, I have to distribute. And so 3 times 1 third x is 1 x. 3 times 4 thirds is 4. Negative x plus x cancels out, so I'm left with 4 equals 4. And so anytime the variable cancels out, that's a special case. And what you've got to ask yourself is, is it true or false? That's true. If it's true, 4 equals 4 is true. So now my answer is all solutions or all reals. Okay. And so when it's true or false, when the variables cancel out, so there is no x's anymore or no y's, depending on what variable you are using. If it's true, you say infinitely many. If it's false, you say no solution. So I probably should say infinitely many. That's probably better than all reals. Last example. Mr. Egan invested a total of $363 in two stocks. At the time of his investment, one share of stock A was valued at $10 and a share of stock B was valued at $12.20. He purchased a total of 33 stocks. So from that information, we want to figure out how many stock A's did he buy, how many stock B's did he buy, and how much total money did he invest in each company. And so for me, I'm just going to use to find the variables. It's good to know what you're talking about. A is stock A. That's how I'm going to do it. And B is stock B. You could totally do like X is stock A and Y is stock B. That would work just as well. I'm just going to use the letters they gave me. And so what do I know? I know that he spent $363 total. And that when he did that, one share of stock A was 10 bucks, so $10 per A. And then each stock of B was $12.20, so 12.2 B. And the combination was the $363 he, he spent. He also bought 33 stocks total. I don't know how many A's he bought, and I don't know how many B's he bought, but I know they combined to make 33 total stocks. So that's what I know starting now. And the next step would be to solve this. So let's write that again. 10A plus 12.2B equal 363. And A plus B equaled uh, 33. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to solve this for A. So I'm going to minus B to both sides. I want to get 33 minus B is what A equals. Just by minusing the B over. That way now I can plug that in for A in the first equation. And so I get 10, 33 minus B plus 12.2B equals 363. Distribute here, and so I get 330 minus 10B plus 12.2B equals 363. Combine like terms, I get 330 plus 2.2B equals 363. I'm now going to minus 330 over. I get 2.2B equals 33. 363 minus uh, 330 is 33. I divide both sides by 2.2, and I get B equals 15. I plug it in up here. 33 minus 15 means that A equals 18. So Mr. Egan bought 
18 shares of stock A and 15 shares of stock B. Now, the question also asked, how much money did he spend? Well, $10. Oh, let's not use the big one. $10 for each share of A means he spent $180 on stock A and 12.2 times 15 shares of stock B means he spent $183 on stock B. And so that is my money answer dollars dollars give these a try tonight please use a separate sheet of paper so that you can show your work because there's not enough space in the workbook